Yeah. The 43rd chapter. Y'all can be seated. Everybody can be seated. We welcome those who are online with us this morning. Hallelujah. Isaiah. He's the way maker. Jesus himself said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. Well, he is. And when we sing and honor him this morning, we're, we're singing to him. Praise God. Every, every, it's just interesting. Every, every song, every praise is unto our God. I said every praise is unto our God. I was just praising God this morning early. I mean, just, just on the way, stopped, and just began to uh, praise God. Stopped at the service station, began to praise God at the service station. I mean, just praise God. Just out there praising God. I'm telling you, I, I, I'm, I, I mean, I'm not talking about only, we're not talking about a silent request. We're not just, you know, well, I don't need to say certain things because I don't want to offend anybody, but, but at the same time, not ashamed of the gospel. Because, see, he's my defender. See, I was praising God knowing that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I was saying that to him at the, at, at the service station, at, at the gas pumps this morning. Because it's the reality, it is the absolute truth. The Lord is our shepherd. You know, he takes care of us. He leads us. Fresh water. Fresh manna. He is the bread of heaven. He is the living water. He is the way maker. He is the miracle worker. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, he's Isaiah 43. I'm talking about Jesus. He is the word. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Too much of the time, we consider things that we don't need to be considering. We're to consider Him. There's things we're to consider not, and then there's things we are to consider. We're to consider him, the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. We're not to consider our own bodies. You're not to consider, what I mean consider, your five physical senses. That doesn't mean God hasn't given us a body or uh, our feelings or five physical sen senses that we can't navigate, okay? That, 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 that doesn't mean <laughs> um, well, see, people hear something like that and then they'll, they'll take something to an extreme, get in the ditch with it. You know, I can tell at times, when, not only by in my spirit, but I can tell sometimes even in my physical body when I need some rest. Can you? Well, he, he gave you that ability. You see what I'm saying? He gave you that, that, that knowing on the inside, if you look, pay attention to it. However, Abraham did not consider his own body neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. There are times when you don't consider your five physical senses. And so you've got to know which is which. You've got to be skillful in the word of righteousness so that you're able to exercise your senses. Hebrews chapter 5, to discern... What's God and what's not God? Okay? My point here is, he said right here in the 18th verse, he said, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold. That means we need to behold. We need to look upon, pay attention. Behold, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness 
and rivers in the desert. The Lord began to speak that to me uh, concerning this service, and I'll, uh, we'll connect a few things here, but it, uh, I'll just say it, and we'll come back to this probably. But, you know, when you're in the wilderness, you just feel like you're out there. <laughs> you just, it's out there, it's almost like you feel like you're wandering. I'm talking about when you're in the wilderness, it just seems like you're just wandering in life. You just, I mean, there's, it, sometimes it may even seem like there's no rhyme or reason. It just seems like you're just going through the motions. You just, and you just don't know. You ever been there? You know, we got a type and a shadow of the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. It wasn't the will of God that they stay in the wilderness for 40 years, but they wandered 40 years. And there was reasons for that. That's not the message today. Uh, the, the, the thing is, you can, you can be in the wilderness and just feel like you're wandering. And you'll feel like and wonder if it's ever going to be any different. Are you listening? He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And also, there's times you feel like not only you're in the wilderness, but you're in the absolute middle of the desert. You, you, don't, <laughs> you feel dry. You, you, dry ain't even the word for it. You feel, uh, I don't know if this is proper English, you feel drier <laughs> than a bowl of dust. I mean, if you just go by what you feel and the things around you, you'll feel that way. But God said, our Father said, our Waymaker said, I'll make a way. And I don't care if you feel like you're wandering in life and everything that comes to your thought, thought, thought patterns and your, your mind and your emotions tries to connect you to everything that's former tries to tell you this is just the way it's been. I don't see it changing. And there's not nothing in me, on the inside of me, that feels like there's a way. Or that I can be basking by the pool. God makes a way in the wilderness, and he makes a way even in a, in a desert. He can bring water. I'm talking about the water, the rain of heaven. Yeah. It's called the anointing of God. It's called his glory. It's called his spirit. It's called his grace. It's what he do, can do that you cannot do. I said it's what he can and will do that you can't even attempt to do. You know, there's a reason why the scripture's in here. You know that, don't you? Because God wants us to think ahead. God wants us to go forward. God wants us to know that today is sufficient thereof. Let's, 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 yesterday's yesterday. Last week was last week. Last year, the last three years, the last five years. You really have to get to that place. Matter of fact, go with me to Philippians chapter 3. We're going somewhere this morning. I'll say this and then we'll shift gears and then we'll come back to this. Or we may just stay in it. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. Philippians, the third chapter. Thank you, Lord. Philippians chapter 3. Because, see, I, I believe... I believe what the scripture says. How pleasant or how good is it when a word is spoken in due season? I'm talking about when you know God's talking to you. I've said in many a service, I've not even been in services. I'll never forget some years ago, I pulled up, uh, ran into a gentleman, was in, just in my truck, rolled down the window, he, he stand outside my truck, he started talking, we got talking there for a few minutes, a few minutes turned into 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes turned into 30 minutes. 
And we start sharing some things, just, you know, start talking about the Lord, some different things. And he started saying some things, and he had no idea. He had no idea. But the Holy Ghost was reading my mail. God was talking to me. God knew my address. You know, my truck's got, got a camera. It's not only got the camera we can see around, but and see the backup camera, but it's got a camera that looks like a satellite. comes in and looks at the top of your truck, looks around, you can see all, you know, peripheral vision all around that thing. Knows exactly where I'm at. Knows what's behind me, in front of me, around me. You think God's bigger than a camera? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. That's what we're singing. Yes, he is. See, you start, you start putting faith in what you sing. Or, let me say it like this, you start singing from Revelation. And there won't nobody have to coach you up. Hallelujah. I mean, you, you won't have to, you know, we won't have to do it. We don't have to do it. It's not, it, listen, I remember when we was in high school, we used to have pep rallies. Y'all remember pep rallies? We got to get everybody fired up for the game. Well, sometimes that was a task where, we, where I went to school because there were years we were okay and were pretty good, and there were some that we weren't. You know, it's tough to get people stirred up if you don't expect victory. And you're just, you're expecting to lose. But you know what? Why do we need to stir somebody up when we're already in the victory? Hallelujah! I mean, I'm telling you, yes, He is. He is the way maker. The Lord is my shepherd. He's my defender. He goes before me. But let me tell you something. He's already, he's already prepared everything for me and, and for you. He's not a respecter of persons. And I, I don't care what happens. And I know you've heard other people say this. And listen, but I, you, you hear the conversations. And not only the conversations, you have thoughts yourself. I mean, some places you pull up and gas is six bucks a gallon or more. And in and, and, and a truck that, like mine, has got a lot, you got a big gas tank on it. I mean, you, you fill your truck up, it's 200 bucks. At that price. Well, thoughts come. You start thinking about the government, you start thinking about what, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know what? <laughs> Yes, He is. See, He's my Savior. He's my Deliverer. The Lord is my Shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Let, let me, he, this is... Every song we sang this morning, he didn't know this, is connected to what I'm, that's in my heart to preach. And yet, we know, brethren, that the same afflictions are accomplished in us that are in the world. I'm talking about the church. We're not the only one. But I'm telling you, our Father is greater than all. He's greater than poverty. Hallelujah. He's greater than lack. He's greater than any financial attack. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. He's greater than sickness. He's greater than pain. And by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and His Word, your body can change. Yes, He is. Well, I'm, I'm, I may not be through singing this morning. I may be singing some more. For it, so, oh yeah. Y'all put up with me, won't you? Hallelujah. You know, He'll put a song in your heart. The, the, the Word of Christ can, it can dwell in you and live in you richly. And, and out of that, you'll, you'll speak to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spirit, spiritual songs. And you'll sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord. See, I, I've done found out. And it doesn't mean that the devil doesn't challenge me just like he challenges you. But see, I, I've, I've done got the truth on this deal. I've got the Word on it. <laughs> See, the Lord, the Lord has said, 
I said, the Lord hath said that he would never leave me nor forsake me. So I can boldly say, I will not fear. I'm not afraid of anything. Philippians chapter 3, you ready? Verse 13. Brethren, who's he talking to? Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. You know, sometimes you need to simplify some things and just get down to one thing. Paul did. You reckon he excluded himself? No, I think he's included himself here. You know where he's writing this from, don't you? He's in prison. Uh, how do you like the air conditioning this morning? It's pretty nice in here, isn't it? Uh, he, he didn't have air conditioning. He was in the lower prison. I, I, can, I, can, I can promise you it didn't smell good. I can promise you can't even scratch the surface of what you're fixing to go eat here in, in uh, maybe in about an hour. Or less. And yet, you'll find out that he was a rejoicing in God and rejoicing in the Lord. And he wrote these words. And he said, Brethren, I count not myself as apprehended, verse 13, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. We just read in Isaiah 43, we need to, we need to forget the former things. Now, when I say forget, that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit cannot bring things to your remembrance. You need to interpret Scripture with Scripture. Jesus said one of the functions or one of the ministries that the Holy Spirit does is he brings all things to your remembrance, what Jesus has said to us, what Jesus has done for us. So he will bring things to you to help you, okay? And he can even uh, remind you of past victories. If he did it once, he'll do it again. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. However... In the context of what we're talking about, there are some things you, you need to forget and should forget. Especially if it's connected any anything that has to do with wilderness or desert. Right. Spiritually speaking. Because God has something new for you and me. And the Lord began to speak to my heart and he said, Roger, I, I begin to... It just reminded me of just the last several months and, and few years here. He said, I begin to uh, restore some things to you. And bring restoration to your life. And not just me, but, but anybody that will receive it. Because our God, our Father, is a God who restores the years that the canker worm has eaten. Yeah, yeah. Anything that's tried to come to steal from us, it, it can be restored. He can put you back from your setback. Because a lot of times we feel like we just messed up so big there's no way. See, that, that's being connected to a wilderness mind or a desert mind. See, I'm trying to, trying to let you see. that, and, and listen, these same afflictions and same things come against everyone. But see, we've got God's Word. And the Word is supposed to bring faith and revelation to our hearts. supposed to reveal to us, help us to see. The Bible says the entrance of His words gives light. And it gives understanding. Where? The eyes of your understanding. Not just your natural eyes, on the inside. Because... Out of your heart, out of the inside of you, is where you're going to have to draw from and live from. Especially when the outward things have sort of had the preeminence. They've sort of been controlling the way we feel and look at things. But see, Paul, we know his story. We know um, his past was not good. He persecuted the church to the degree that he had people killed. He was a murderer. I mean, that, and the devil will try to, listen, you, you go down that road. Listen, I've, I've ministered to men in prison for years. You, you, you can literally at times see just the, the spirit, just... Spirit oppression and just demonic spirits upon people. I've seen it. But I've also seen, seen men in there that, that's got revelation, got to hold the truth. I remember this one young man. 
Well, he's not young, but he's not old, but, but he went in there when he was young. <laughs> and the judge told him, his last words, the judge told him. This is what the young man told me. He said, the judge, when he pronounced my sentence, he looked at me and he called his name and he said, you will die in that prison. That's the words the judge told him. You will die in that prison. And you know what he told me? He just he had a big grin. He just lifted his hands. He said, he was absolutely correct. <laughs> he said, he was absolutely correct. He said, I died. I was crucified with Christ. And now I'm a new man. Praise God. There's, see, he was, he was experiencing something new. He became a new creature. You know what? He really had revelation of it, folks. He wrote music. I mean, God gave him praise and worship songs. He'd lead worship in the prison. I've, heard, I've even heard him preach, man. I've, I've, I've heard him preach. <laughs> it's authentic. It's the real deal. This is who we're connected to. That's, that's the way maker. That's the miracle worker. The greatest miracle is what takes place in a man when he's born again. Can you say amen? amen? So what did he say here? He said, This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Let me say something to you. God's got some things before you or ahead of you. Ahead of you, ahead of me. It's before us. And he's prepared it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says that he's prepared and made ready in the Amplified. He's prepared and made ready things that the natural eye and the nat natural ear has not seen or heard. But the Holy Ghost, he sent to us to help us to know these things, to experience these things, to live these things, to walk in these things. But it's spiritual. And it has to, has to do with the relationship with the Holy Ghost. Matter of fact, he went on to say this. He said, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore. See, it's connected to what he just said. Or we could say, therefore, let us. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. The word perfect there means mature. If you have any spiritual maturity to you at all. If you've got any maturity spiritually about you at all. He said, be thus minded. In other words, that's King James. If you have any kind of spiritual understanding about you at all, you need to think this way. You need to think this way. Think what? God's doing a new thing in my life. God's got newness awaiting me. God's got new things on the horizon. See, people, what happens is people lose hope. They don't have any hope. They don't have any dreams. They don't have any God-given desires. They don't, they don't, um, when I say they don't, God may have given them some, but sometimes people let these things slip and wane. Remember when Paul was out on that ship? And he told them, he said, guys, we don't need to leave. We don't, we don't need to do this. And they went ahead and made the decision anyway. Way. Remember the Bible talks about how they got out there and all hope was gone. Aren't you glad that he's the way maker? And thank God for his mercy and thank God he has the ability. Even like Peter, when, when at one time he was walking on the water, he was walking above everything that the storm was throwing at him. Peter was walking on top of it when he kept his eyes on Jesus and stayed on his word. But when he began to look around and consider, see, consider not the former things. When Peter began to consider what he was looking at, he began to sink. Now, aren't you thankful for the mercy of our Lord that he reached down and, and grabbed him and pulled him out? And he's done that for us many a time. But he still wants us to walk even as he walked. Peter even experienced that, even in Jesus' earthly ministry. This is a supernatural way. We have to think like this. And he said, 
And if anything, you be otherwise minded. Or in other words, if you think anything else besides this. That's another way to say it. God shall reveal even this to you. In other words, you've got to see this. You've got to get a hold of it. God's got to reveal this to you. You've got to see it this way. To go forward, to experience what God has for you and me. I'm talking about His perfect will in our lives. We, we cannot consider former things in the context of what He's talking about. You've got to forget certain things and you've got to go forward. And you've got to expect the new. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, go to Romans chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. I think I will just dev into this a little more. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. I keep hearing that song on him suddenly. Matter of fact, God began to talk to me while I was, while I was over there praising, praising him, worshiping him. He gave me a scripture. We'll get, to, we'll get to that in just a few minutes. I already got plenty of scriptures. He gave me another scripture. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 6. Look at verse 4. Therefore, it's connected to even the previous chapter, okay? Not just the first few verses of chapter 6. It's, it's connected to the glorious fifth chapter back in the fourth chapter. We don't got time to go there. But it says here in verse 4, Romans 6, 4, he says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism in the death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. There's a lot of things in this scripture, and we could use this scripture to teach a few different things. I'm talking about like being buried with him in baptism. I'm talking about what happened to us in the heart and the mind of God. See, as far as God's concerned, we were buried with him. He took our sin. He bore our sin. He knew no sin. He had never sinned. He was made sin. He knew no sin. But he bore our sin. We were buried with him. But we were raised with him. That's, that's not the subject here. The subject is, it's a powerful thing, and, and that's a subject for our teaching for another day. But even as he was raised up by the glory of God, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Let me tell you something. The glory of God raised him up. The power of God, the Spirit of God raised him up from the dead. It's the greatest demonstration of authority and power that's ever been demonstrated. It's even greater than the power that God demonstrated at creation when he created the heavens and the earth. Because when he created the heavens and the earth, hell was not trying to stop him from creating the, uh, the firmament and the heavens and the stars. But all of hell and the host of hell and every demon and Satan himself was trying to hold him captive and keep his soul in hell. The scriptures tell us this. But it was not possible that he could be held or be holden by it. The glory of God... Raised him up, and he raised us up so that, listen to me, there's a purpose in it, so that we can walk in newness of life. See, what the Lord began to talk to me about, he said, Roger, I'm doing some new things. Now, if you just go by your feelings, you'll, you'll, you'll give over to your flesh. And if you, if you yield to your five physical senses at times and just the things out here in the world that try to come at you, it, it'll, it'll, I, I like to say it like this. You know, it's like, it's like, well, I don't know if I need to use food analogy and food terms right now or not. But see, for example, well, I will, because I just do anyway, and they always accuse me of it. So if you're going to be accused of it, Tori, I might as well just go ahead and do it anyway. That's what people say anyway. Well, if you're just going to say I'm going to do it, I just might as well do it anyway. Well, I'll do it anyway. You pray for me, won't you? There's a place that I like to go Sometimes, and you may not like it, and you may have not been there. It's called the Flying Biscuit. 
And uh, <laughs> I like to go over there and get the free bird. And I'm not talking about Leonard Skinner either. You can get the dirty bird. You can get the free bird. I, that's where I, I sort of like the free bird. You know, he's still, sort of like that song anyway. So I go get, get, get me the free bird. Well, the free bird is, you know, it's like an open face. You just get your biscuits. They spread them out on your plate. Cap a couple of biscuits, you know. And then they'll, uh, they'll have your, uh, they, they have chicken breast or like fried chicken breast, like tender, t big chicken tenders or breast, either one they'll have. And, and they put on top of that. And then they'll fry or cook your eggs to your choice. And they'll put it on top of that. And then you just, you, I, listen, you smother it with a gravy. Now, they, they do a pretty good job of putting that gravy on there. But you know what I do? <laughs> Ma'am, if you don't mind, please, can you bring me an extra bowl, not a cup? You ever went and get, they, you know, ask you if you want soup? Would you like a cup or you want a bowl? Are you kidding? I want a bowl. Don't ever bring me a cup. That just, that aggravate me. That's just a couple of bites. I'm a boy. I'm a man. No. And I smother it. Now I've done got so far off. I don't know where I've connected myself to this, Chris. I'm, I'm over here, and I'm, I'm really hungry. You know, I don't eat on Sundays. So, you know, you sort of get physically hungry, but that's all right. We'll get past this. No. I like it smothered. I like it covered. Well, I'm telling you, everything he's done for us, it's more than being smothered. <laughs> I mean, if you've ever had to dig down through that gravy, even get a piece of chicken, you're going to have to dig down. In, I'm in Christ so much. My life is hid with Christ in God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm, 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 listen, I'm anointed. He that has established me and has anointed me is God. Do you know what anointed means? Anointed means to smear or to rub on, to smear over. That's what to anoint means. I'm talking about the word anoint or anointing. It's, it's to smear or to rub. I'm smothered. I've been, I've been so smeared on, and you've been smeared on with himself. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Romans 6, 4. We're to walk in newness of life. God has new things for us. I said God has new things for us. And God began to talk to me about expectation and really believing. Sometimes we go through the motions. Sometimes, we, it, listen, just life, we just deal with life, and it can, it, things can, even spiritual things can just become common. We get used to it. But God wants us to be stirred up. You've heard me say this here recently. Peter talked about it. He said, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, I will not be negligent to stir you up and put you in remembrance, even though you know certain things. My responsibility as a, as a faithful minister is to stir you up. Praise God. We have to be stirred up. Paul told Timothy, he said, Timothy, I've seen your tears. When I call to remembrance of you, I see it. See, he saw it in the spirit. He wrote a letter to him. He saw it in his heart. He knew it. He said, Timothy, wherefore, stir up the gift of God that's in you. He had laid his hands on him. He had prophesied over him. You can find this in First in First Timothy, and in Second Timothy, and yet he's admonishing him to stir some things up. He said, "This was in your granny, was in your mama. It's in you. It's of God." Matter of fact, Second Corinthians five seventeen says, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's what? He's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, what? All things have become new." And all these things are of God. All these things are of our loving Father. 
who has a divine plan for our life. God loves you, and He has a plan for your life. God loves me, and He has a plan for my life. Most people don't even know that, have not been told that. Most people have been preached to in such a manner that's caused them to feel condemned, unworthy, really to a place that they really don't expect. They don't really believe in the goodness of the Lord. But see, it's the goodness of God that leads a person to repent or to change. Repent just means that, you, you, hey, we're going this way, we turn around, we're headed another way now. I'm, I'm not going in the same direction I was. I, I'm, not, I'm not driving to that destination. I turned my car around. My car has been turned around. I'm not going to that place. I know what's at that place. I'm not going to that place. I'm headed another direction. But in this direction, like I said, the Holy Ghost is greater. He knows all things, and He wants to lead us. He wants us to think a certain way. He wants us to press and go forward because of what lies ahead. We're talking about rivers where there's a desert. Rivers represent the Holy Ghost, the things of the Spirit. Well, let me tell you something. The things of the, of the Spirit in your life has multi-purpose. It's to benefit you perfect. Uh, uh, yourself it has purpose in your own life it's to bring revelation of him to you okay but it's also to to be in and upon you to do things through you and around you hallelujah thank you lord jesus go to ephesians chapter 4 right quick ephesians 4 Ephesians 4. God wants to do something new. You know, we were... We'll, we'll get to Ephesians 4 in just a second. Just, it, we're going to go to the 23rd and 24th verse here in just a second if we get to it. We were in here praying the other night and praying about some things and... and, and we just begin to share some things as we got into prayer, which we always do. But the Lord began just to stir some, stir some things up in my heart. Um, because, and it's really connected to what we're talking about. God has new things for us. God has things that's prepared and made ready. I mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay? These things are prepared and made ready. And God has given us the Holy Spirit to help us navigate and to experience and to walk in these things. And it all has to do with newness. Do you know that the Bible says that God's mercies are new every morning? Now see, sometimes when we think about mercy, we can just put one definition on it or, you know what I mean? This is the way I look at mercy. But let me remind you that God, in His Word... What the Lord revealed to Paul, to the church at Corinth, he called him the father of mercies, plural, and the God of all comfort. It means there's more than one kind of comfort. The Holy Ghost is the comforter. But he's the father of mercies, plural. So sometimes when we think about the mercy of God, we think, well, God just had mercy on me and and he saved my bacon, so to speak, today, and I, I didn't get in trouble or I didn't whatever. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's part. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Do you know that a blind man named Barnabas, who was blind, could not see? Now, let me say something to you. You've got to think, guys, you've got to think. Naturally, there's no way he can be healed. In the natural, there's no hope. There's no way. But see, he's the way maker. See, he makes a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He, he makes a way when there is no way. And we've got to think this way. And we can't think former. We've got to think new now. And even though we've heard scriptures like this, God wants us to listen on the inside and have ears to hear and really to press forward and go forward in joy. And even like Wednesday night when we talked about even though in this life we know there are challenges, there's things that try our faith. Our faith is being tried at times. 
God's not on trial. His goodness is not on trial. Our faith is on trial. And yet, having not seen God with a natural eye, yet believing, we rejoice with joy. Well, see, you can't rejoice with joy unless you're really in a place that you're looking at the unseen, not at the seen. The Bible says that destruction and famine, we're to laugh. You don't laugh at destruction and famine if you're just looking at it in a natural sense. But you can laugh at it. And see, a lot of people don't even understand that. A lot of people think, how in the world can I laugh at a situation? We're not laughing because the situation happened. It's like uh, thanking God for all things. Well, we're thanking God for all things that are in the name of Jesus and what he's provided for us. That's what we're thanking him for. We don't, th we don't thank him for accidents or tragedy or sickness and disease because it didn't come from heaven. Have you ever noticed that when the devil is taking out, I'm talking about you go to the book of Revelation, when you, when you, have you ever, I mean, if people would just, oh, Lord, if people's eyes would open up and, and not be influenced by religious spirits and doctrines and men and tradition of men, have you ever noticed that when the devil's removed and bound and put away, that there is no more sickness, there is no more tragedy? There was none before he, sh he showed up in the garden, and when he's put away, there's none. If God's behind it, if God has something to do with it, then even when he's put away, we'll still have more of it. Because if it's coming from heaven, it's coming from God. It's not going to cease. But people have been religiously brainwashed instead of New Testament taught. And they really don't have a clue and they don't have a revelation of who he really is and what he's got for us and what he's prepared for us. And we're here for such a time as this. It's a divine plan. It's a divine purpose. It's a new and living way. Hallelujah. And we've been raised up with him. And he was raised up with something, raised up with something glorious. And that glory and that same spirit Face him up lives on the inside of us right now, according to Romans 8, 11. And it will quicken us and help us, even our flesh, and get past the very things that try to hold us, steal from us, rob us of our hope, of our God-given desires and purposes and dreams, our future. But see, I've already got a word that God has certain thoughts toward me and toward you, uh, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, and those thoughts are not evil, they're very good. And it's to give you a hope and a future and an expected end. There's increase for us. Psalm 115 says the Lord is mindful, He's thinking of us and He wants to increase us more and more. There's new things, there's more new things ahead. And what the devil tries to do is use life, circumstances, even people, situations to, to steal from you, to rob you of your joy and your hope and your expectation. And, and just think, well, just, you know, it is what it is. Well, I know that's a saying out there, and it's said a lot. But it is what it is. It's temporal, and it's subject to change. The Word of God is forever settled in heaven, and it lives and abides forever, and the Word of the Lord endureth forever. And that's what we're born of. We're born of incorruptible seed. I'm talking about the Word of God, which is incorruptible. It lives and abides forever, and it's forever settled, and it doesn't change, and it's above all. And when spoken and believed in, it will remove a mountain, It'll cause the devil who's coming against your life to flee and to leave just like it did Jesus when he said, it is written. Hallelujah. We were in here, and um, 
I, I just sense in my spirit when people deal with things, especially when you go through things for an, any ext extended period of time in your life, or it's been a season in your life, you feel like, like I said, you've been in the wilderness, you've been in the desert, it's almost like you, you've been there more than 40 years. You know what I mean? It just seems like that. Well, the enemy preys on that. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. He comes to try to get, to get you to become weary. He comes to, to steal your strength. Well, what is your strength? Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Bible tells us we sow in tears but we reap in joy. If he can get your joy, he can get you from harvesting and receiving what you desire. Because you reap in joy. If you're not in joy, there's no reaping. You're not gonna, he's, he's taking away that, your harvesting tools. I'm talking about your spiritual harvesting tools. He's, he's taking that away from you. That's why the Bible tells us not to grow weary in well-doing. Because we shall reap if we Faint not. So what is he after? He wants you to faint. The Bible tells us if we faint in the day of adversity, then our strength is small. But if our strength is small, then our, we don't have joy. That's why Paul was trying to encourage the believers here at Philippi as he was in pre prison to begin to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He said, I've learned. I've learned this, folks. He's letting them know. Listen, I, I can tell you from experience, from, from what the Lord had revealed to him and through what he experienced, he learned how to be content in any situation. Why? Because there was an anointing that come from the head of the church, Christ himself, and his anointing was in and upon his life, and he could do all things through the anointed one and his anointing that brought a strength to him. Well, you can't, you can't take away joy from strength because the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's why he was rejoicing. That's why they were singing and praising God at midnight in the inner prison. You see it in the book of Acts. Matter of fact, you see the example of what happened in the book of Acts. You see his epistle from that incident and situation uh, to the letter that he wrote to the church at Philippi and other letters. The book of Ephesians was a, a prison letter. The book of Ephesians says... We're to be filled. Right? Giving thanks always for all things unto God. And I begin to see it. And we begin to pray along those lines. Lord, strengthen. Because see, he will strengthen your inner man. Ephesians chapter 3. That's a prayer. Paul said, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Where? In the inner man. Why is that? Because out of your heart flow the issues of life. You deal with things from the inside out. Because if things from the outside in are controlling things, that's, that's not the protocol. Hallelujah. So we begin to pray strength for people by the Holy Ghost, that, that, that God would begin to strengthen all of us. I mean, we pray for you. You're included. You're part of this and others. And specific things we prayed for, for people who've been dealing with situations. Because, see, you've got to see this, and you've got to realize that it's not going to stay the same. If you'll stay with it, If you, if, you, if you will, through faith and patience, continue on, you'll inherit it. You'll see it. Matter of fact, go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, we're gonna, we may come back to Ephesians 4. Let, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 right quick. Hallelujah. I've got a couple more scriptures here, and I'm going to lose you. I don't know if the flying jays open today or not, but it, it, anyway, I'm just messing. All right, here we go. You can have to drive to Birmingham if you do. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 
Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 19, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. That's just a sin consciousness. Listen, he's already, he's already bore our sin in his body. You can have boldness now because of his blood and how it's washed you and cleansed you and perfected you. I'm talking about in your spirit, man. See, you're a three-part being, and sometimes people get, they don't understand spirit, soul, and body, then they get confused, and they let the devil in and begin to lie to them about them. Uh, that's another deal. Verse 23, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that his that is promised. Verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, after that you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. See, patience, we, we've looked at this so much on our Wednesday night services, where it says, Be ye also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. The word patient is, the, is to be constant, steady. To be constant. Not back and forth, up and down, just constant. Stay with it. The enemy wants to come, use sick, cer 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 certain situations and circumstances and, and things to try to, he's a deceiver, he's a liar. He'll, pray on, on, uh, he'll use the flesh to prey on your mind, start beginning to get you to think a certain way. And once you begin to think a certain way, you'll begin to, uh, it'll just trans transition over into believing it. And then you'll really take it when you start saying it. Okay? But God's got something new for us. And see, the devil will lie to people and say, no, it's not going to be new. Let me tell you what that is. That's a, that's a wilderness place and that's a desert place that we read in Isaiah 43. That's just a place where you're, you're stuck in the wilderness and in the desert. And it, it, there's just, it's, it's almost, you're parched, you're dry, you're not stirred. You don't feel, any, feel like there's any anointing, anything. But see, we we got we to re remove that and, and forget that. God's got something new. And we got to pick it up right now and go forward. And, and basically, what happens is with anybody, when God begins to uh, accelerate your life, launch you forward into some things, you begin to press toward the mark, that doesn't mean the devil leaves and goes away forever. I said, that doesn't mean that the devil leaves and go, goes away forever. And we're not magnifying him because he's already defeated. But he'll still try you, and he'll try your faith. And what he wants you to do is not to be patient, not to be constant. He wants to try to steal that hope, take your joy from you. He wants you to become weary because he doesn't want you to reap the final result. I'm talking about the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm talking about what's been prepared and made ready for us. And a lot of times when you get stirred in certain areas, even you get excited about something, God does some things in your life. I mean, even here, going through some of these things with the classes, different things. Uh, don't think it's strange, the scripture says. Even after situations, the devil wants you to just bring you back to common. You're not, you're not stirred up. You're not excited. Just, just back. Here we are. We're just back in the saddle again. That's the wrong saddle. No, you've got to stir yourself up. You're going to stir up the gift of God on the inside of you, and there's certain ways that we do that, and we'll talk about that later. I'm not going to get into that today. But you've got to stir yourself up. One of the ways you do it, of course, I'll say this, is what you say. What's coming out of your mouth. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, um, let, me, let me shift here. 
Can, let, me, let me shift here a couple things. I want to go back to what the Lord was speaking to me. Let me... Let me uh, uh, this is... Let's go to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. We're going to go to uh, the 28th verse. We're going to do this in an amplified classic if you got it, babe. Matthew 11, 28. We're going to go to amplified classic. Thank you, Jesus. Here it is. It's on the screen here. Now, this is Jesus talking. He said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. And I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve, and notice this, and refresh your souls. Newness is connected in part. Now, there's different things, but newness is connected to refreshing. You ever heard anybody get any rest? I mean, I'm talking about physical, from the physical standpoint. I'm talking about wore out, get a good night's sleep, wake up, and they go, man, I feel like a new man or a full, new woman. I, I feel refreshed. Well, they had rest. But see, Jesus wants to take you to a place to have a real rest. Matter of fact, he wants us to, this is, this is newness of life. This is a new and living way. When he says a living way, this is, in other words, this is the way we live. What I talked about a while ago with Barnabas, the mercies, the father of mercies, that mercy, that particular mercy brought new eyesight to his eyes, a condition that when the natural uh, could not happen. But it was the mercy because he cried out, Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. I didn't want to leave that undone a while ago. I made reference to him and the Holy Ghost just brought that back up to me. That mercy healed his eyes. There's other kind of mercies. That mercy that's of the Lord. That's a facet of God's mercy that brought healing to his eyes. I'm talking about changed his physical body. Do you know that's the kind of mercy we have supplied to us every morning? Hallelujah. <laughs> I heard these words on the inside of me. For if you only knew what is in store for you, the things that are new, the things which I have to do, you would not be sad. You would not be discouraged or dismayed, but you would rejoice. And there would be a joy in your heart. There would be a song in your lips. Your hands would be lifted high. And you would praise me from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. When you truly knew the very mercies that I have for you. Every day they are. Every day they belong. Every day they're yours. For all things are yours. All things come from my hand and from my bounty. All things come because of my great love and my grace that is bestowed upon you and to you and for you. So if you only knew what I have in store for you, you would not be discouraged and you would not be blue, but you would be glad and you would rejoice and you would awake with great expectation. You would awake with joy and anticipation of walking with me and walking in the new things that I have for you every day, even the little things, even the things that seem insignificant. They'll touch your heart. They'll bring you up. They'll make you aware. They'll cause you to see that that is just a part and that is just a taste of my goodness and of my glory. For if you only knew what I have in store for you, you would rejoice and you would not be blue.
Where are we at? We back, at, we back on that? There we are. Come to me. All you who are laboring are heavy laden and, I'll, and are overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve you and refresh your souls. Next verse. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease. Notice this, and refreshment. Hallelujah. You know, that's the rivers in the desert that Isaiah talked about. That's a newness. He said, consider not the former things. He said, I'm doing a new thing. I'm telling you right now, if we will recognize just what come up in my spirit, if we know what's in store and what's prepared. See, when you, when you get over in the flesh, then I have not seen nor ear heard. That's the natural man. That's the flesh side of man. That's being controlled by the five physical senses. Yeah, my... Huh? And your eye won't expect to see and your ear won't expect to hear in that place. But if you'll come over here and understand that every day God has placed himself within you to walk with you and to walk in you. Did he not say, I will walk in them and I will dwell in them. I'll be a God to them. I'll be a father to them. They'll be my people. Second Corinthians chapter 6. That's exactly what he said to us. It's a communion each and every day. There's new things for us, and God wants us to, uh, uh, to walk in newness. It's, it's a new and living way. It's the way we live, and we live every day expecting something new. And if we don't, and if we don't forget what's behind and go forward, then God has to reveal this to us. We have to be thus minded. Because the truth is, a lot of people, they really don't expect anything different. They really don't. They, they no more believe for something new and different in their life going forward than I'm a man in the moon right now. I'm talking about believers. They just, it's just, it's the same old, same old. And I'm not criticizing anybody because I've been in the same old, same old. Hallelujah. Can I sing now? I'm not going to get to this. We may pick it up next week, but I, I'm going to go to a couple of places. Let's go to the book of Psalms right quick. Just a couple of scriptures here. Psalm 67. Let's do that right quick. And we'll stay in the book of Psalms for the rest of the duration, Danny. And I'll try to stay behind this camera, camera as much as I can, so you won't have to. Psalm 67, verse 5. Let the people praise thee, O God. Psalm 67, verse 5. says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. Go to the 68th chapter here. We're in the book of Psalms. Verse 19, it says, Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. I talked about the mercies that are new every day. There are benefits that God has bestowed upon us every day we awake. Psalm 103 tells us what these benefits are. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities? Who healeth all our diseases? Who delivers our life from destruction? Who crowns us with his loving kindness and tender mercies? who satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. These are daily things that God provides for us every day. Every day. Let me tell you something else that's provided for you every day. Goodness and mercy. We were singing Psalm 23 a while ago. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you three-fourths of your life. That ain't what it says. Half of your life. No. All the days of your life 
So today would have to be part of all the days of my life. If it's all, A-L-L, all the days of my life, tomorrow will be a day that's part of all the days of your life. You get up the next day, it's going to be a part. Goodness and mercy is there for you every day. Now, everything of the kingdom and everything of God has to be received by faith. You don't work for this, lest any man should boast. How, how hard was it for God to forgive us of our iniquities? I'm talking about what did you have to do to get him to do it? Now, I want you to listen to me as we close out here. I want you, I want you to listen to me. How hard is it for God to forgive us? There's no wonder Jesus stood in the house in Capernaum. When the man was let down, they tore his roof off, and he said, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And he knew the thoughts of those religious people. He perceived what they were thinking and what they believed, what was on the inside of them, and he said, Which is easier for me to say, Your sins be forgiven? Or to say, rise up and take your bed and walk. But that you may know that I have the authority to do this. And this is really why I've come. I'll demonstrate it to you. Get up right now. If we will start connecting everything else in our life. The Lord said it to me like this. Most people, especially in church, who's been in church for a while, no matter what, I don't say what, no matter what, but for most denominations, uh, especially in the Bible Belt here, most people know that, you know, there's been preached that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and that God loves us and that God will forgive you. We tell people all the time, it doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, He loves you, He will forgive you, He forgave you at the cross. Right? We have to. Now listen to me. We have to carry that over in every other area. As far as there's no difference with God, it's just as easy in the other areas. I'm talking about from your perspective and what you really believe about God. Now I know sometimes people have been preached wrong things and told them that God's mad at them and all that kind of deal. And, and those seeds have been planted and you have to uproot those things. But for the most part, most people don't struggle with with believing that God will forgive them. Now, some people have. I get it. They feel like they've done, they went too far, they've done something, and God's mad at them, and he won't forgive them. They feel like they've committed the unpardonable sin or something. People have got over there. But for the most part, people don't really struggle. Just like if, if their child or their husband or their wife comes and asks for forgiveness, and they really see that they, they, they are repentant, most people forgive. And it's easy to do it. It's, it's no, you know, we just do it. But when it comes to healing or, or provision or, or, or really fulfilling some of these new things and everything that God's prepared for us and really walking in it, walking in the power and walking in the spirit and experiencing supernatural things in our life, it's almost like we, it's almost like we struggle with it. But we shouldn't. We should put it in the same, same category. Because the daily benefits that your soul should be magnifying and blessing and praising God for is He's forgiven you and He's also healed you and He's delivered you and He's crowned you with His favor and His goodness so that everywhere you go, things, good things can happen to you. That doesn't mean you don't ever come into bad situations or a bad thing can't come against you. But I'm telling you right now, it's like I've told you before, you've got to get on, the, on this side of life. The good is so good that the bad don't even matter. I've had bad things happen. You've had situations happen. But I'm telling you, it don't even, you're saying it don't even hold a candle. Now, let me finish with this. Psalm 63. You're right there. Psalm 63. Verses 3 and 4. Because thy love and kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. One of the things about being joyful and being in a place of seeing uh, or preparing yourself to walk in these things, 
to not allow the enemy to, to, uh, to, to cause you to grow weary so that you don't walk in the fullness of these things and walk in the newness of what everything is prepared. It's to be grateful and be thankful. And always wake up praising and, and thanking God. You know, we got little songs like this. I remember years ago, you remember? Thy loving kindness. Remember that song? It's better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands to thy name. Remember? I lift my hands, Lord, unto your name. I lift my hands, Lord, unto your name. My lips will praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands to thy name. That's a song that came out of the Word. When I was first introduced to it, it was in the fall of 1984. You want another one? Psalm 92. I've got two more for you. I told you I was going to sing some more. And then we're going to leave. See, this is the closing song of the service. You know how sometimes, you know, people close with just as I am or different places like that. Well, this is the closing song. Songs. Psalm 92. You ready? This is another song. Verse 1, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. <laughs> you remember the song? It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto our God. Remember? O Most High. We can sing a song like that, or do we really sing it from Revelation? That he is most high, and he's high above all things, and we're seated with him. And we thank him because we're joint heirs with him now. We've been made equal heirs, and he's raised us up and made us sit together with him. Far above all principality and power. One last one, Psalm 134. I had several, but I'm just going to give you a couple. Psalm 134. Thank you, Jesus. And the reason I'm, I'm, I'm sharing these scriptures, that's why I love the book of Psalms. I love the book of Psalms. Because David was a man after God's own heart, and we realized that these really were Israel's songbook. They were divided up, but it was their songbook. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, which stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord hath made heaven and earth. Bless thee out of Zion. Now that's only a three-verse psalm. But I remember this song. I was just meditating on these things. And the reason I was meditating on these things is because... Walking in newness is connected with rejoicing, thanksgiving, praise. Because you're really, listen, if you're not thankful and praising God, you really don't believe it. We just read over in 67, when people are praising and magnify God, then the earth will yield forth its increase. Now we know the provision has already been made and it's a finished work. We're not trying to get God to do something, he's already done it. Through the cross and through the burial and death and resurrection. But the word is nigh you in your mouth and in your heart. You believe in your heart and confession is made unto. It was already a finished work when Paul wrote that. But you still believe something. There's still something on the inside working on the outside. That's why you guard your heart with all diligence. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. That is your strength. That's how you reap things. That's how you walk into things, is being grateful and thankful. And, and you're not grateful and thankful 
if you're not really believing because the Bible says, yet believing, you rejoice with joy. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Joy and peace is in believing. May He fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in this hope by the power of the Holy Ghost. God wants you to be constant, steady. He don't want you to cast away. He don't want you to think, just look back the former. Now we're, we're finishing up here and connecting everything we said. He doesn't want you just thinking, you know, living in that wilderness, in that desert. Don't think it's going to be new. Because you feel a certain way or because what it's looked like the way it's been. We've got to remember, listen, <laughs> you're connected to something that's greater than all things. And it can change overnight. And I know a lot of things are walked out and some things are a process. But don't ever think that things can't happen quickly. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. That ain't the only suddenly in the Bible. I'm telling you right now, you could be in a place within three days from now or three weeks or three months or a year from now that make your head spin. And you'd be going around going, uh, who would have thunk it? Because it's beyond your mind. This is the newness. This is the new and living way. This is what we're connected to because of what He provided through, him, through His sacrifice and through His life. And a lot of these things are prophetic that we read in the Old Covenant. They're types and shadows. But He's come. He is the way. We are new creatures. We're to expect new. We're to press toward the mark. We should be expecting increase in our lives. We should expect new mercies every day, goodness and mercy every day of our life. And I'm talking about mercies. There's different kinds of mercies. The only reason I, I bring uh, one kind of mercy in is because it, it changed the natural situation. That could not be changed. That's how powerful it is. You know, just being nice to somebody. Yeah, we we're, be nice to people. This is, this is beyond being nice. This will change your eyesight. Where you couldn't see it all, now you see it all. Come bless the Lord. All you servants of the Lord. Which stand by night. In the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands. In the holy place. And bless the Lord. And bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord. All you children of the Lord. Who stand by night or day. In the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands. Lift up your head. Lift up your eyes. If you could only see. From this holy place. And all that His grace. Has in store for you. Then you would bless the Lord. You would rejoice evermore. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank 
Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you today for this time that we've got together here in this place. Lord, not just a natural place, not just a physical address. It's a spiritual place. It's a heavenly place. It's a place with you. A place in the spirit. It's a habitation that your word t tells, tells us. It's a habitation of the spirit. And you inhabit our praise. <laughs> we are your inhabitants. You inhabit us. Paul said, I'm, I'm trying by revelation to apprehend that which has apprehended me. We're not here per chance. We're not here by coincidence. We're here with purpose of a great plan and of a great design. And it's all divine and it comes from you both individually and collectively, for each one of us here, and even those watching. Lord, we acknowledge you and we look to you to help us by the Holy Ghost. Not to consider the former. Not to look behind. But to know and understand that there's newness. There's a new and living way there is a newness for each and every day of our lives and we acknowledge that now we receive that from you and we look forward to the things that you will do in and through our lives going forward from this place because it's a heavenly place it's not just a natural place and I thank you, Father God. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we do not yield or walk according to the flesh, but we walk in the Spirit and by the Spirit because we're in the Spirit if we've been born again. And the Spirit of Christ lives on the inside of us. Hallelujah. And the Spirit that lives within us will quicken and help us even in our flesh. So that we can be led by the Spirit of God. And we can completely fulfill the divine plan and purpose you have upon our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, sir. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. If you're under the sound of my voice and you're watching here, we watching whether it doesn't matter if you're here watching and you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. This is your day. This is the divine appointment for you. This is a, an opportunity to enter into to newness, a new and living way with him. To fulfill the very plan and purpose he has for your life. Because he loves you so much and he has a plan for your life. You, you may have never been told that, but it is the truth. And he died on a cross and shed his blood so that you could enter in and he could enter into your life. And when he enters into your life, you enter into his kingdom. Hallelujah. That has everything for you that you ever desired, you ever dreamed. If that's you, under the sound of my voice, and you've never believed on Jesus, then just from your heart right now, say, Jesus, I believe on you. I receive you into my life. I receive you into my heart. I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. And I surrender you and my life to you to help me to fulfill the very things that you have for me in my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. Now, if you prayed that from your heart, if you prayed that from your heart and you've never let anybody know that, then tell somebody. Tell somebody. You know, my heart stirred, guys. I, I, I'm trying to get through here and navigate, but I just keep... That's why I'm sort of hesitating here a little bit and sort of just... I, I just sense there's something in, in my spirit, and it's just I'm not... It, it, you know what I mean? Hallelujah. Let, let's just pray just for a second here. Just, just for a second. Let's just pray in the spirit. Okay, la testi. Rukumanda stikela nambrandan stikela na frebede stokum brahachi. Thank you, Lord. Iklana sumbro umbre etsti papa manchte. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sir, I don't know you. This young man here, I, I don't know you. I, I don't met I never met you. Um but you've been in my spirit when you just come in here. And, I, and it's, I've had different people that I've not known before that's come in. That's, that's not it. I, all I know is this. It, it, there's a total new pathway that God's got in store for you. It's a different pathway than you've, you've been on before. It's something new. When I, when I talk about newness in a new way, there's a new phase of life for you. And it's good. And the Lord wants you to know today, He knows exactly where you are. And He looks upon you. He looks upon the heart. Not all people look on the heart. Most people look on the outward. And that's a scripture that the Bible talks about. People look at the outward. Man will look on the outward. And man will say things and they'll think this or they'll think that or they'll say this or they'll say that. But God has always seen your heart because he looks upon your heart. And there are some things that he's put on the inside of you and it would seem like at times these things have lied dormant, but they're in you. And they've been in you from a youth. And it goes back to your youth, even young. And there's been many things that's probably tried to alter certain things to keep things dormant. Or to keep things from coming to fruition and being carried out in your life. But the Lord wants you to know today... Just in childlike faith and trust. You put your trust in him, and he's going to carry you to the places that he's had destined for you from the very time you were conceived. And it's a good thing, and it's a good plan. And God wants you to know he loves you, and he knows where you live. He knows your address. And this is just a demonstration today that you're very much aware of where you are and where you live. But where you are and where you live is not where you're going. 
is where you're going. If you'll follow him and just simply yield to him. Don't get out of your head. Don't try to figure this out with your mind. Figure out that this, this crazy preacher's in here talking to me about some things. You know, get, don't even go there in your mind, just in your heart. When God told Abraham that he was going to be a father at 90 years old, or really before that, but he told him he's going to be a father of many nations. And he said, look at the stars, look at the sand. That's beyond your mind, especially when you're past age. But see, it wasn't, it wasn't bigger than his heart because the Bible says he believed in his heart even though it's greater than what you can think. I'm telling you, there's some things in your future that you ain't even thought about. But it's there and it's prepared. But you follow him and just don't, don't worry. And I, keep, I keep saying, don't worry about what you don't know. Just begin to start where you are going forward. It is connected to very, the very things that I, I ministered today. Just forget about the former and all, and it's a new thing. Just trust in your heart. Just get up every day and say, okay, Lord, be it unto me. When the angel came to, to Jesus' mother and said, you're going to have a son she said, how's this going to be? I don't even, oh man, he, she said, he said, the Holy Ghost is going to do it. And see, and then she said after that, she just got out of her head and got right in her heart and said, okay, be it unto me, Lord. I receive it. That's all you have to do, sir. Just on the inside. Don't try to figure it out. You just begin to receive it from this day you walk out here. You just be thankful every day. Acknowledge him. And, and, and just say, Lord, just show me, lead me. Simple prayers. Okay, Father, I'm good with this. Just show me. Show me. I'm open. And he'll do it. He's going to put you in the place he's always had for you. And there may be some other steps going forward. It's okay. I'm telling you. Good. He likes what he sees in your heart. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands. Praise God. <laughs> ah, my. Mm, glory to God. You're getting, mm, I get over. I get over in these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. <sighs> if you'd have told me prior to July of 1984. When I was up all night without sleep, wouldn't turn on a light, would inject things into my body, and, and, and just, I'm not going there. But if you'd have told me what my future would be like, I'd have called you a liar to your face. And I would have told you you're absolutely crazy. Because it's beyond what my eye could see or my ear could hear right then. But it was there and it came forth. It's a new and living way. This, this stuff, and it's not just of this dear brother here. I'm telling you, it's, it's for all of us. You can take it right now. And when God speaks a word to somebody just from the Spirit, even though it's personal, yes it is, but it's, it's for all of us because He is not a respecter of person. And anything that's of God in that, you can have it too. Otherwise, He would be a respecter. And He's not. And it doesn't matter, even though he may, his life may be different in some ways than yours or mine, mine from his, it doesn't matter. I'm taking me some of it. I said, I'm taking me some of the same stuff. I'll receive it for myself. And you can receive it too, those of you who are watching. We have to think like this. Because we just read scriptures in Philippians 3 where it says, if you're not thus minded, if you don't think like this, then God's got to reveal this to you so you can think this way. 
Because if you don't really think this way, you're not going to expect, you're not going to rejoice, you're not thankful, you're not going to get up expecting it. And it's just be, it's a wilderness. And it's a desert. But rivers have come, and the rain of heaven is here. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is here. He's a type and a shadow of water. The Word is a type of water. And the Word has come forth. It'll wash away all the other stuff, bring in the new. And we can say, yes, Lord, be it unto us. We're expecting new things. We're expecting to be in places in our future that we'll look back and go, be like, you've heard me say this before, it's like Gomer Pyle, spiritual Gomer Pyle. Golly. 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 You, and you know what? You can help other people. And you can say, listen, I can tell you, he's not a respecter person. I never thought it myself. I never thought I'd be. I had no clue. But I'm telling you, I, I, six months has gone by, three weeks, whatever, one week, a year. And I'm in a different place now than I was. And I can tell you, he'll, <laughs> if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. And then you can just put your hand on their shoulder or whatever, take him by the hand and just say a simple prayer, and he'll show up the same. If you'll do it in his name. Amen. We love you. We love y'all. I don't know if the flying biscuit's open, but they probably are if you want to go there. Yes, sir. You grab that. We're going to honor the Lord with our giving. Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the opportunity to sow and to give. It's, it's part of what you've established we do not consider it lightly, but we are grateful for it. We do it as unto you, and we thank you that your grace is upon it. Great power and great grace is upon it. It comes up before, before your throne as a memorial. Hallelujah. It's a sweet-smelling aroma, Paul said. It comes up even into the throne of God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hey. God bless y'all. I need to see you tour before we leave. And that's it. I think we're good. Praise the Lord.